welcome to DC Today. I'm Trevor Cummings filling in for David Bonson today. Uh, just about around the favorite time of the year for me. Uh, I love this time of the year because everybody starts to share what they're grateful for. Everyone's thankful. Hopefully everyone's in a good mood as long as they're not going to Costco trying to buy uh, some last minute turkeys or whatnot. Uh, also, markets are somewhat quiet around this time of the year. Um, as you get closer to Christmas and New Year, um, you see volumes drop a little bit um, and kind of just the general news feed is, is a little bit less than normal. So markets were positive today. Um, a lot of that was backed by this idea that uh, maybe inflation is going to come down faster than the general market assumed. Um, the rate hikes will be a little bit lighter than assumed. Maybe a 50 basis point rate hike is what's most likely rather than a 75 basis point hike. Um, and again, that changed the general mood of markets. So you saw the Dow go up 397 points, which is 1.18%. Uh, S&P was up 1.36%. Uh, NASDAQ actually matched that. It was up 1.36% as well. Top performing sector was energy. Energy was up 3.18% today. Bottom performing sector was real estate down or up, sorry, 0.46%. Uh, uh, why did energy do so well? Well, um, again, markets are all based on expectations and assumptions. OPEC Plus came out and said they are going to stick with their production um, plans, and therefore uh, you saw oil go up uh, about 1.15%. Uh, that's $81.20 a barrel. There wasn't a lot of economic data today. So in the DC Today, I kind of just talked about top news stories. Um, things that would make the headlines today uh, is that the Supreme Court said no to Donald Trump. Um, he asked them to stop the Ways and Means Committee um, from getting copies of his tax return, um, and the Supreme Court uh, did not side with him. The other big news came out actually just before I jumped in here to record. Um, and that was that the Biden administration is going to extend um, the time where you don't have to pay interest on your student loans. Why? Because um, there's a bottleneck in the courts. We don't know how that's going to end up. Uh, folks are fighting against um, that debt relief. And uh, I will tell you, for me as a financial planner, uh, it makes things difficult. I was uh, just in a planning conversation with a client this week talking about some student loan debt uh, and the best way to manage it. Um, and my advice and guidance was because they were going to start um, having interest accrue in January is some ideas on how to refinance that debt. Guess what? My advice doesn't matter now because um, they can go all the way till the summer uh, with that extension. Uh, and we'll see how that all plays out. Other big news, um, everybody who's not a soccer fan just became a huge soccer fan uh, as we watched the World Cup. Um, U.S., I thought they were going to pull out the win, uh, ended up being a tie. Um, I don't watch soccer a ton, but it, it seems like it'll be interesting how it turns out based on the group they're in. Um, so good luck to the American soccer team. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, if you go to the written, you will have um, not Ask David, but you will have an Ask Trevor section today. Um, a question I'm getting a lot lately is uh, this question. Is rising bond yields good for investors? Uh, what somebody really means by this question is uh, they don't totally understand how bond prices work and how bond yields work. Um, so I just want to take some time on the article to explain kind of the relationship of the, between the two. The thing that's hard is if you don't understand bond math, this terminology of yields and prices can get mixed up and you don't know what's positive or negative for you as an investor. And that's kind of what I wanted to um, spell out in the article. Now, I'll make it simple. Bond prices and bond yields have an inverse relationship. Uh, let's talk about what yield actually means. And David wrote a whole Dividend Cafe article a few weeks ago on this. I would encourage you to go there. But yields are really simple. You look at the income that that bond produces and you divide it by the price of that bond. So if we assumed that income stayed the same, what would drive yields up? The bond price coming down. Again, I will remind you, bond prices and bond yields have an inverse relationship. So what does that mean if you're asking, is that good or bad for investors? If you currently own bonds, that means your bond prices came down, um, which probably was a little bit unsettling for you because you saw a change in the value on your statement. Um, if you're looking to buy bonds, it's a good thing for you because now you're like, man, I'll get paid a little bit more income or I'll get a little bit higher yield. The chart I put in here that I think will be helpful is you show going into COVID, 
um, how bond yields were dropping. Um, and I don't know exactly where it was, but the 10-year Treasury sat somewhere around a half a percent uh, in that kind of uh, depths of the COVID moment in 2020. Um, and I show two arrows, a green arrow showing those yields come down and a red arrow showing those yields go up. I never got a lot of questions about bonds um, until the last, call it 12 months. And why? Because what was formerly a tailwind for folks that own bonds is now a headwind. Uh, and people are wondering, man, why are my bonds performing like this? Because isn't this supposed to be the conservative or safe part of my portfolio? It was an a historical year so far. We've never seen bonds move like they have this year. Another thing that I'll note is it's very rare, uh, if you go back in history, for you to find a year where stocks and bonds were negative in the same year. It has been significant for 2022. So investors feel like they have nowhere to hide. My encouragement to you, if you have an advisor, I would connect with them and understand how bonds work um, and understand how bond math works just to make sure that you can kind of frame your expectations and make sure that you're not um, overthinking or adding anxiety where it doesn't need to be. With that said, um, I'll end with this. We are extremely grateful for everybody that watches these videos, everybody that reads our commentary that we produce, um, and extremely thankful for the clients that we are honored to serve. So um, I send my blessings here from Newport Beach. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you eat great food, watch some football, whether you consider football soccer or American football, um, and you get genuine uh, great time with your family. And with that, this is Trevor Cummings signing off for the DC Today. <music>